This is a CBS 4 News update. Good morning, I'm Lauren Pastrana. Investigators are working to determine what sparked a fire at a Miami Gardens church. This happened at the Greater New Bethel Baptist Church yesterday afternoon. Staff and children were inside the attached child care center at the time. Because of the fire's location, it took four hours to put out. Started on the roof. Um, my understanding is there was some roof repairs going on and somehow a fire was ignited on the roof and it's trapped between several layers of the roof and that's what's making it very difficult for firefighters to stop the fire. Investigators are looking into the company that was working on the roof at the time of the fire. Aegis Roofing says it was just doing general maintenance. We're told though the church may be a total loss, no one was injured. The 9-11 attacks ushered in a new era of security at airports, and now new facial technology is showing early signs of success. In the last three weeks, new facial recognition technology at Washington's Dulles Airport has caught two imposters trying to illegally enter the U.S. Customs and Border Protection is testing the system at 17 airports nationwide. The technology takes a picture of a traveler and compares it against a database of passport or visa pictures belonging to people scheduled to fly that day. It is optional for U.S. citizens and pictures are stored for no more than 14 days. The facial recognition is very accurate. Even, a, even an older photograph, we're seeing very, very high match rates, 99% plus, if we have a photograph of that traveler. But there are concerns that may not always be true and could lead to the technology falsely flagging minorities more frequently. The ACLU recently put every member of Congress through a similar facial recognition system. 28 lawmakers were misidentified as people who had been arrested. A disproportionate number of those were people of color. Some lawmakers have called for the program to be stopped, but the TSA says it has to test it to figure out issues, and that's why it's currently doing it on an opt-in basis. Now, CBS4 Weather with meteorologist Lisette Gonzalez. Good morning. Category 4 dangerous Hurricane Florence headed towards the Carolina coast. And you can see that very distinct Iowa, very symmetric and powerful hurricane. And as of the latest 8 a.m. advisory moving west northwest, 17 miles an hour, sustained winds, 130 miles an hour, and forecast to continue in that general direction could be making landfall somewhere here along the North Carolina coast or near South Carolina here as we head into very early Friday morning, possibly as a Cat 4 or Category 3. Category 2 into Saturday, and then it looks like it is just going to stall out and produce torrential rain here. The potential for catastrophic flooding, as right now we're seeing that cone encompasses not only the Carolinas, Georgia, parts of Virginia, Tennessee, the southeast is going to get soaked. This is a long duration event that will likely even linger into early next week, unfortunately. We do have tropical storm watches and warnings in place through parts of the mid Atlantic, including Virginia, and also for the Carolinas, hurricane warnings in place. Hurricane Hurricane watches, storm surge warnings and watches due to the potential for life-threatening storm surge 6 to 13 feet above ground. And then the rain. That is the biggest concern with Florence since it is expected to just halt and just stall out here across the southeast and the Carolinas where you could see 20 inches of rain. Some isolated areas could see up to 30 inches or more. And then we're talking about the damaging gusty winds over 74 miles an hour. The highest likelihood of that taking place in the area shaded in purple here along the North Carolina coast. In the meantime, Tropical Storm Isaac is moving west at 15 miles an hour and will likely be passing the Lesser Antilles as we head into your Thursday afternoon and then continuing westward and heading in through the Caribbean and weakening to a remnant area of low pressure likely by late weekend. Most of the models in agreement that Isaac will continue on that westward track. There are a few models that uh, stray away and maybe keep Isaac moving west northwest across Española or towards Cuba, but the bulk of the models are forecasting a westward track. Tropical storm warnings and watches are in place for the Lesser Antilles, where some areas could see four to eight inches of rain and gusty winds. There is Isaac and this disturbance that has become better organized in the south central Gulf of Mexico. And the Hurricane Center says this could become our next tropical depression or tropical storm. It is forecast to move west northwest, generally towards Texas. So folks along the Texas, Louisiana coastline. We'll certainly be watching that locally here in South Florida. We are cloudy and warm with low 80s as we look from our Everglades Holiday Park camera and the radar and satellite reflecting those clouds. 
some of those clouds actually as a result of that disturbance in the Gulf. So those high clouds streaming out. But for today, the rain chance is low, relatively quiet, can't complain. There could be some stray storms, although the bulk of the activity will be across the interior sections, the Everglades and the Gulf Coast. Now tomorrow into Friday, an additional moisture will increase our chance for some scattered storms. Highs will be right around 90. It'll feel like the hundreds. And also keep in mind with the swells associated with Florence and that disturbance, we are going to see some rip currents, rough surf, and the potential for hazardous marine conditions starting tomorrow, but especially Friday and into the weekend. Lauren. Lisa, thanks. That's the news for now. You can always find us on CBSMiami.com and tune into CBS 4 News at 5, 6, 7, and 11 for all of today's important headlines.